So here we go again with the report on the serious fraud in Scotland to <laughs> the serious fraud team that is Law Enforcement Scotland. I'm just going to go in and ask them to witness my attempt to get this taken up by Law Enforcement Scotland. It's my second attempt. I've got signatures all over the war crimes issues of the arms to Iraq scandal and of Michael Matheson's sign signed uh, document confirming receipt of my accusations on the Trident nuclear weapons scandal and there's the case number for the incident in Kelso, number 410 and I'll try keeping the camera on, I doubt that they will let me do that for very much longer And the door's locked. <laughs> Although there is somebody in the office which gives me hope. She's not in the law enforcement team, she's just the administrator on the desk. Hi, can I talk to any of the Bobby about the issue I talked about yesterday? I've now got the documents. Right, but talk to. Any of your on duty police officers? Um, I don't know if they've come back, just give me a minute. So there's the poster on serious fraud and the post office box number for that is in London. That's the Crown Office and Prosecutor Fisk. Oh no, that's about the police, not about serious fraud. They've lost the pamphlet with the contact details for the serious fraud office in London, which is all over my website already. And they've got prizes for excellence. And there's the Freedom of Information Act that the Sheriffdom at Jedburgh will not let me have access to as they impose the gagging orders on me for revealing the asset stripping of British policemen. Uh, and that is in the hands of G4S and Malcolm Rifkind's former directorates there. That's Malcolm Rifkind that is all over this transcript G4S failed at the London Olympics and Lord Condon is still their director. <laughs> the man that was the boss at the London Olympics and earned two million pounds a year was forced to resign. Lord Condon is more powerful than him and Princess Diana's accident when the inquest was in his hands was deemed to be an accident. In France it was an unlawful killing which is the official name for murder in the monarchy. This time I've got dozens of witnesses in my hometown to report the incident that I'm trying to report for the second time following my advice from the Justice Minister and his referral to the civil service in Scotland who can do nothing about law enforcement in Scotland and have asked me to revisit my police stations. The other receipt I have in this bundle of documents is from the St Leonard's, Leonard's Police Station in Edinburgh where I reported the same crimes but they refused to take my admission of the data on that despite my advice from the administrators for the Justice Secretary in Scotland who is Michael Matheson. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to see this online you look for uh, the selling your country and your innocent husband uh, in the Scottish referendum. Uh, it's Prof George Lee's revelations and I'm just trying to make it plain that now all of the policemen need to understand that their jobs are being asset stripped by all of the politicians, none of whom work for their people. It's ever so difficult to get anybody who's prepared to risk losing their job to expose the crimes in our country and the serious fraud office PO box number has disappeared from their pamphlet base <laughs> and there's the homelessness issue I've explained already how at the law courts shelter attend 
and they defend tenants who've gone a couple of thousand, couple of hundred pounds in debt because they cannot pay the rent. And what happens is that the housing associations that run million pound debt pools, like the local council and the national governments, <laughs> when the tenant in the privately owned assets that used to be publicly owned, that's the care homes and the rental homes that the council used to run. That's Alistair Hutton and Miss Tom, the legal solicitor for the Scottish Borders Council. Yeah? They now bang up and prosecute and send the repo man in to dispossess them. <laughs> the Lloyds Banking Group that now owns the Bank of Scotland, which has just been confirmed by the Bank of Scotland staff, who were reluctant to sign anything on Law Enforcement Scotland for reputational reasons, they refused to sign my petition. They acknowledged that they are now part of the Lloyds Banking Group trillion dollar debt pool that is used to asset strip everything that is solvent in Scotland, like the Scottish Police until it goes into the debt pool that is run by G4S in this august country. That's Malcolm Rifkin's crimes. And the earlier case number I got from the Kelso office was incident number 410. Excuse oh, me. sorry. Are involved just now. Would you mind not coming Oh, sorry. The officers are involved just now. There'll be three in about 15 minutes or so, if you'd like to come back then. Okay, yeah, I will do. Okay. And can you confirm, just, I'm not sure pointing out at you, but you, can you confirm that your colleague who was the parking attendant lost her job in this region and that that policy is happening all over Scotland now? Um, I can't speak for that, but uh, yes, she's moved on to another job. Right. Um, and G4S are now policing our social security office. Yeah? And what I'm trying to get out into the news that G4S are trying to take over the whole of local policing all over Britain. Yeah? And the parking attendants have already lost their jobs locally. Yeah, so that's part of an ongoing problem. Uh, yeah, like the, program. like the sectoring up of all of Scotland's devolved policing into the hands of Sir Stephen House from Fetis, who got £250,000 pay rise when he got his knighthood in the same week. I can't any of that. Okay. But the serious fraud poster that you had on the back wall that reports the serious frauds through a post office box number in London, right next to the MI6 headquarters, you no longer have the pamphlet for that? <laughs> I've got it. It's on my website already. Okay. But I need to come back in 15 minutes. Okay, thanks ever so much.